our song. Well, Father, we just want to thank you tonight for your goodness and mercy. We love you. You're in the right place at the right time. Father, we love you. Yeah, that's a good one. She'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> she gave me that look like I haven't sung that song in a long time. But it's all right. God will help us. Jesus, we love you so much. We love you so much tonight. You know, to me, coming to church is not just something I do. I come expecting. I, go, I come expecting God to do something. And, and the song said you're in the right place at the right time. You may never be in this place at a time like this again. Amen. You may not get this opportunity again. Don't worry about it. Uh, I was thinking in the scripture um, how sometimes people fail to realize that sometimes in the, in the midst of a small group is where Jesus did some of his greatest works. You know, the, the little girl was dead for 12 years. She's 12 years old. She wasn't dead for 12 years. She was 12, 12 years old, and she's dead, and, and she was laying there. And, and Jesus took Peter, James, John, the mother and father, five of them. Right, Peter, James, John, mother, father, Jesus, and the girl, seven of them in church. And they get to witness the power of God. <laughs> they get to witness the power of God. He raised that girl back to life where everybody else was on the outside. They didn't get to see what God, what those people get to see in the room. Amen. He took Peter, James, and John in the mountain, and they get to see God for the first time. Right? Just a few. Sometimes it's just a few it takes, and, and we know we're more than seven here tonight, but thank God for that, right? What I'm saying is just this can be our night to receive a blessing from God. Amen? This can be our night to receive something good from the Lord. I don't know. This may be the only time God may give us again to cross this path in our life to where God can reach down, God can touch, and God can move, and God can bless, and God can work in you. So tonight, I encourage you to open your heart and say, Lord God, whatever the need is in my life, for Jesus, I'm believing in you. I'm believing in you tonight to meet that need. I'm believing in you, God, to touch. I'm believing in you, God, to bless. Let your faith reach out. I think that's what the song says. Let your faith reach out. Let your faith reach out. I'm going to start tonight. You're in the right place at the right time. Yes. At the right time. God is moving by His Spirit.
church, you better sing. You can bless, you can touch, you can heal, you can do great things, God. You can have your way tonight. And we pray for that. We pray for the moving of the Spirit. We pray that the Holy Ghost will bless. We pray that the Holy Ghost will touch hearts and lives and minds as we look to you and as we open up our heart and our faith reaches out to you, Jesus. Oh God, we're in the right place at the right time and tonight can be our night to receive the miracle we've been so longing and waiting for for so many years. Tonight can be your night. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. That woman was in a disease for 12 long years. But the day that Jesus came across our path, she was in the right place at the right time. Amen. She could have stayed home. She didn't have to go in the crowd. She heard about Jesus, the Bible said, and she came to where he was. Like we're preaching about this morning. She had a meeting. She met Jesus. But she got up from where she was and she went. And uh, I don't know, maybe she was singing a song. Probably not. <laughs> it wasn't written back then. Maybe she had her own version. Today is my day. I'm sick and tired of being in this condition for so long. I'm going to go to Jesus and I'm going to touch him. And listen to the way she said, if I can but touch his garment, he said, I shall be whole. That's, that's faith speaking. She said, if I can just touch Jesus. I know that whatever was plaguing my life for 12 years can be done just like that. And the Bible said, of all those people around Jesus, touching him, she was the only one that really connected. Because he said when she touched him, he perceived that virtue went out of him. And the word virtue is translated as power. Jesus knew, he was like, whoa, we just got weaker. What happened there? Somebody sucked some energy out of me. Amen. Not all those other peoples were there touching him, but nothing happened because uh, they weren't, they didn't have the faith that a woman had. Amen. That and they weren't as desperate as she was. Sometimes we got to get desperate for God. Amen. Amen. We got to get desperate for a touch of God and say, God, I'm in the right place. I'm in church tonight. You're here. You say we're two or three are gathered. There you are in the midst. And tonight, just do something for me. Jesus it has to be personal and God can really do it. Amen. All right, let's, let's talk about Jesus for a little bit tonight. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Ephesians 3, 14 to 20. It said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length and the depth and the height. And, height. and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge 
that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do abundantly or exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We all believe God is able to. Amen. 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 It's our faith in God. It's our faith in God. We have to believe. And I want to use verse 19 for the text. He said, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's what I want to preach about tonight. I want to preach about the fullness of God. The fullness of God. I don't want just a little bit. I, I, want, I want all that God has for me. Amen? Amen? I'm not trying to lose weight spiritually. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, it said the righteous shall be fat. <laughs> Worshiping, and I don't know what he means exactly by that, but we'll take it spiritually, we can all be fat in the Lord. Amen. Don't worry, God have a mansion just for you. However big you are, you're going to fit in it. Amen? <laughs> However big you get, spiritually speaking, that bed will be able to sustain it. Don't worry about it. Just get fat in Jesus. Amen. Fill me up, Jesus. Amen? Fill me up. I want to preach about the fullness of God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. As Marvin, would you please pray, sir? Thank you. Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each of the present. Father, touch each one heart according to their individual need. Father, mold and shape us into what you want us to become. Uh, as we, as pastor ministry, word, let us understand your will. Father, bless the gift. Father, bless the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the gift. We need a gift. <laughs> well, now you got to kick out that one. <laughs> I want to preach about the fullness of God. And while he was praying there, a story came back to my mind. I didn't plan to share it, but it came to my mind about, um, and I don't know how accurate it is, but I think I read it or heard somebody shared it. And it was talking about Alexander the Great, the one that, you know, the leader of Greece, the ancient, ancient Greece, Greek empire. And it was saying that he was there with his soldiers and all his men at a certain place. And they were just sitting there, you know, resting, relaxing and stuff like that. And this man came up to Alexander the Great and, and, and you know, when he was given permission to come and, and make his petition before him. The man said to Alexander, he said, you are rich. You have all this wealth. You conquer all these land, all these things you claim for yourself. He said, I, I want you to pay off all my, my debts. I want you to, to give me enough money to pay off all my debts so I can start all over again. <laughs> and his soldiers thought it was funny and thought that Alexander was, gonna, was getting ready to kick the man out and you know, throw him out for asking such a crazy request. But Alexander didn't do that. He looked at the man and said, okay, I'll give it to you. And when they asked him why he did that, he said, because the man believed that I could. And the man believed that I will. And the man believed that because I have the ability and the willingness to do it, he asked, and therefore I'll do it, because he had confidence in me. And so it is also, we can have confidence in God and ask God, God, I want the fullness of the Lord. I don't want just a little bit of Christianity. I don't want just a Sunday morning religion or a once a week religion or a little bit here and there. I want the fullness of God. I want my life to be filled up, and that's not greed. That's God saying, he have it, he's willing to give it, you're willing to ask. He will do it. Amen. He will do it. As the scripture said, he said, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. This is God's desire for our life. Don't just settle for a little when God has so much in store for you. Amen. God wants you to be filled to the brim, to the point of overflowing. When David made his prayer in the Old Testament, he didn't say, My cup is half empty. He didn't say that my cup is three quarters. He didn't even say my cup is full. He said, my cup run it over. Amen. He said, my cup run it over. He said, this is the kind of lifestyle I want in God to where my life is overflowing with the fullness and the blessing of God. As the song said, fill me up. I want to run over. You know, he said, you provide the fire. I will provide the sacrifice. Yeah. You're right. 
God, I will give you the sacrifice. I will come before you with sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving and honor unto your name. Lord God, you just look down upon me and you provide that holy fire. And let's have a hallelujah sacrifice. Amen. Let's offer unto the Lord an offering that is worthy of his time. An offering that he's worthy of. Giving him our all, not just a little bit. When they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, which is the great commandment of all? He said, Thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with everything within thee. And he said, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, what he's saying, when you give God all, God will turn back and he will give you all. Amen. If you pour out your heart and worship to the Lord, he will pour out his spirit upon you. If you pour out your heart and your desire to God, saying, God, I want the fullness of the Lord. I'm here not to go through the motions or go through the, the ritualistic thing but I'm here to genuinely worship you with all my heart and all my soul then and then you will be able to receive the fullness of the, of the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Fill me up Jesus. How many of y'all want to be filled up? Amen. Amen. I don't want to be half full. I don't want to run an empty. <laughs> that E in your car doesn't see a talk about that. That E in your car doesn't mean enough. <laughs> it means empty. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to fill it up. I'm, I don't know about you, but I feel very confident when I have a full tank of gas. You know, and I've been, <laughs> my wife will tell you, I ran out of gas before. <laughs> Looking at that Chevron sign. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes, you know, you drive and stuff like that, you want to keep, you want to keep filled up because it, it gives you a sense of ease because especially if you're traveling through the deserts of, of uh, Arizona and they said last or, or the next, next gas station is, so many miles away, and you look down at your tank, and you got a quarter, and you start doing math, and you start praying for miracles, and you're like, Jesus, I believe, I believe you can stretch this gas all the way to the gas station. And so, it, fill it up, amen, <laughs> fill it up. Open up yourselves to God and let him fill you up. And, you, and I, this is what I was talking about, Rachel. Start your day's journey on a full tank of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, it's right here. Start your day's journey on a full tank of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fuel, if you will. And then, before you go to sleep, refuel, right? Amen. Refuel so you can be ready for the next day. Fill me up, Jesus. Fill me up with your salvation, your deliverance. Fill me up with your spirit. Fill me up with your power. Fill me up with your anointing. Fill me up with your presence. I don't want to just have a little bit of God when there is so much of God available to me. I don't want just a little bit of faith when God said you can have all the faith. When he said I can open your understanding and your, your heart and I can fill you with faith and I can fill you with power. He said you shall receive what? power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I don't just want a little bit of power because the devil I'm fighting is not a, a weak devil. He need, he need Christians to be strong. He need us to be full of the things of God in order to do a real good fight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some people don't even like when their opponent is not strong enough. I remember when I was uh, in high school, I used to start, you know, I couldn't play football. I got to America when I was almost finished in high school and the junior into the senior year, so I couldn't join football. I, I wasn't, I, I never heard about football, American football, that is. I heard about football, what we call football, soccer, right? And, and uh, it certainly wasn't good for basketball, so I joined the handball team. <laughs> and I made a team, and I was playing for the school, just like that. And in a few months, I was on a team, playing for the school, playing in tournaments and stuff like that. But we'll go practice at the park in New York City. And this guy, he was one of them skilled players. And so we were like, okay, we'll play with you, man. He was so disappointed with me. <laughs> I was no match for him. You know, I was like, he was like, like I was just a little kid playing his, his dad or something, you know. I was not good enough to play with him because he was in a totally different league and his sport and stuff like that. Well, sometimes the devil may think the same way about you. But now when you're full of the Holy Ghost, amen. Now when you're full of the Holy Ghost, when he sees me like, oh my goodness, I'm in for a fight. Oh my God, I don't even want to go down here. I don't even want to cross this Christian because I will get a rebuke so fast I will not even like it, amen. And so that's what God wants us. He wants us to be filled. He said that you will be filled with all the fullness of 
of God. This is God's desire for your life. He said also in Ephesians 4, 13 and 14, in the same book, just a different chapter there, he said, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. And the word perfect man speaks of a complete man, someone that is completely full of the good things of God, like you complete a perfect circle, a complete circle. And so that's what God wants. He doesn't want us to have a half circle. He doesn't want us to, to just uh, do a little bit here and there. He wants us to be filled. God wants us to be filled. Amen. God wants our life to be filled. When he gives us joy, he said, fullness of joy. When he gives us peace, he said, my peace have I leave with you, not like the world give. Amen. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. God is not up there building us a little shack or lean-to. He's given us the fullness of heaven. He's given us a mansion, streets of gold, eternal life, not just an ordinary life, not just a temporary 10 years in heaven, everlasting life. Amen. Everything about God is to the fullness. When God saves us, it's not a just a, oh, I'm just going to deliver you from this and deliver you from that. He wants to deliver us completely from everything. Amen. That's the God we serve tonight, a God of fullness. And so here he's saying, till we all come in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto that perfect, complete man, unto the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Of the fullness of Christ. God wants us to measure up like Jesus was. He wants us to be able to walk in the shoes of Christ and be like him in every, in every, every way. In verse 14 he said that we henceforth no more be, no, that we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There are so many today that are just waiting for a chance or just their whole ministry is based upon deception. They just want to preach the good things and tell people all the wonderful things about this and prosperity, this and that, but they won't tell them the whole gospel. They won't tell them the whole gospel and because of that, they're robbing people from the power of God. They're robbing people from the power of God. God said, sin shall not have dominion over us. God said that we are more than conquerors through him. God said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's the God I serve. Amen? That's the God I serve that gives us the power and the ability to overcome all these things. And so, how do we overcome it? When we are filled up with Jesus. When our tank is full with the Holy Ghost power, amen? When we are prayed up and our life is blessed by the Spirit, and when you have this kind of lifestyle, when you live, if, if, when your life is filled up with God, there will be no room for Satan to put anything else in it. It's easy to be a Christian. I always tell people it's easy to be a Christian. Satan can't fill, put anything in your life. Y'all ready for this? It's deep. Deeper, deeper, right? Satan can't put anything in your life if there's no room for it. Amen? He can't put anything in our life if there's no room for it. He can't put fear in there if there's no room for fear. He can't put bitterness in our life if there's no bitter room for it. He can't put jealousy in there if there's no room for it. The only time we can come in is if we're not filled up with God. And he said, God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And so when God comes in and light comes in and our life is filled with light, guess what? There is no room for darkness. Yeah. Amen. There is no room for darkness. And so I want to give, when the devil come and said all these things, just let him know, sorry devil, there's no room. No vacancy. My life is occupied. Like, you know, <laughs> you have to park and you try, you got to raise the restroom really bad. And there's one porta potty out there. And you go by and you see that sign says occupied. You can't get in. <laughs> it's occupied. <laughs> you got to stand there and wait and hope that that person will hurry up and get out of there. Or just go in the tree line, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> it's occupied. You can't get in. 
Amen. And so it is when your life, when Satan comes and he's looking to bring something in there and he sees that your life is full of God. Your life is full of God. Your heart is full of God. Your soul is full of God. He can't get in. Amen. I don't, I don't have to worry about Satan get, get a stronghold in my life if my life is filled with the power of God. Amen. If my life is full of God, when he wants to come and give you a bag of worries, just say no room. I'm sorry, I have no room for it right now. Amen? He come and he said, okay, here, I want to give you this new custom design argument that you can really enjoy with your husband or you can really enjoy with your wife. Just said, no room, devil. I don't have any room for anything. Thank you for your offer. It all sounds well. I belong to Jesus. Amen? It's a wonderful thank you, but I don't have any room for it. Like somebody, you know, you stuff yourself at a Thanksgiving time and they bring that lovely dessert that you love so much and you know you see it and you say, wow, that looks pretty good. I'm sorry, I don't have any room. I'm full. I can't, I can't fit anything else in there. If I take another bite, I'm going to throw everything up. I'm full. There's no more room. Amen? And that's the way we can live our spiritual life. No room. No room. I don't want that argument. I don't want those worries. Maybe you come and say, hey, I want to give you this beautiful box wrapped by my own hands. That is full of fear. Full of fear. I designed it just for you. Sorry, devil. No room. No room, devil. No room. Maybe he comes to you and said, you know, I, I have plenty of time at work, so I write all these things in there. I get a kick while I'm writing it. <laughs> I'm preparing it. The message, I'm, laugh, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it because I can just picture myself saying, sorry, devil. No room. No room. I preach a message one time. <laughs> sorry, devil. I'm kind of busy right now. Talk to the hand. I ain't got time for you, right? Go, go, go bother somebody else. I'm busy. Maybe he come to your life and say, look, I have this shapely <laughs> bottle of temptation <laughs> that you can enjoy. Kind of quiet. The shapely bottle of temptation that you can, you can numb your mind with and create all kind of problems in your life and destroy your liver in the process. Sorry, devil. I have no room for it. Amen. I have no room for it. Maybe you come to your life and said, I have all these issues. Some of them are major, some of them are minor, but they're all wonderful. This can help you. <laughs> I get a kick right in these things. <laughs> you say, I have all these issues, major or minor. This can, this can keep your mind occupied and active for days. Think about the brain exercise that it will do for you. Think about it. I can bring all these things. I can plant these seeds in your mind and I can mess you up for days while you're thinking about it. And you're, instead of focusing on God and focusing on the good things, you begin to think about all these thoughts I put in your mind that doesn't even matter. Amen. That has no relevance to it. I just came and planted a seed in your mind. You can think about it for days and destroy yourself and get all worked up about this. Maybe somebody cut you off on the road and you spend the next 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, thinking about it and they don't even know they're gone they're way ahead of you and then satan began to work in you amen he's exercising your brain in the wrong sense you know all you gotta say is think about all the brain exercise you can get from it all the worries and stress that can fill your life it's a sorry devil no room amen no room if you don't remember anything just remember this no room no room satan i'm filled up with god why there's no room because i'm filled up with god I have the fullness of God in my life. My life is overflowing with the presence and the goodness of the Lord. You see, Jesus came to bring the fullness of God in our life. He, didn't, he doesn't want us just to have a little bit. John, when he wrote to the church, he said, My little children, these things I write unto you that your joy may be full. Amen. God wants you to have fullness of joy. I'm not saying there's no problems. We all have problems. Things happen. You know, things, things come, but... You know, you can't let that steal your joy. You can't let that take the peace that God gave you. That, didn't, that thing that is trying to steal it didn't give it to you in the first place. It came from God. So maintain what God has given unto you. Fight for the blessings that God placed in your life. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 through 10. He said, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. He is the head of all principality and power. He completes us. 
He completes us. Jesus completes us. I don't need, to use, and if you read on in, in Colossians, what they were trying to tell the Christians there, to use these people that we read about earlier, these false teachers that come into the church and say, well, now that you're saved, you're a Christian and everything, your life still needs some help. You need philosophy. You need this. You need that because, you know, God is not everything. And so Paul wrote to them and said, uh-uh. He said, we are complete in Christ. Amen. We are the complete person in Christ. We don't need philosophy. We don't need all the things that the world has to give. Uh, we don't need all those things. And I read certain of those things, you know. I'm messing with my wife. Told her I'm studying psychology right now. <laughs> I am reading this book about psychology. So I tell her, she can, I set up a nice chair at home and she can tell me all her problems. <laughs> She's not buying into it, though. Hey, I saw this thing one time that this guy, this preacher, make a big announcement to his church. He said, this Sunday, this Sunday I want you to, to bring all your problems to church. Bring all your problems to church and we're going to give it to Jesus. And, you know, it's like one of them cartoon things, they're drawing things. And, and, he, and the guy went home all excited. And the next thing he shows that he's coming to church and he had a basket on his head and he had his wife in there and he's coming to church. I'm bringing all my problems, Jesus. I'm going to give it all. Lay it all on the altar. <laughs> Preachers said bring all your problems, right? <laughs> but we don't need philosophy. We don't need all those things. We got Jesus. I'm completely filled up with God. When we got saved and later filled with the Holy Ghost, it was God completing our life. All the missing pieces were replaced by the grace and the goodness of God. Now God wants us to enjoy the blessings that he has freely given unto us. And he wants us to be thankful and praise him and worship him. And that's what we come to church to do is to give God thanks. Lord, I'm thankful that you filled my life with all the things that I couldn't fill it with. That the things that the world couldn't fill it. All these years I spent in the world, my life was never complete. My life was still empty. I was still searching. I was still seeking. I was not filled. Even the more I take in, the emptier I feel. The more I give myself to sin, the worse I feel. But now that I'm in God, now that I'm saved, now that I'm a Christian, my life is filled. Amen? My life is filled. And it is God's desire for us to have the fullness of the Lord. I enjoy the blessing that God gives me and I'm thankful for it. By my, ful by my fulfillment, my joy, my happiness, I found it all in Jesus Christ. Amen? One last verse of scripture, John 1, 14. He said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Everything about Jesus was full. Was full. Amen? Was full. He came in the fullness of time. The Bible said, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son to be made of a, of a woman made under the law to redeem them when I was under the law. The Bible said after Jesus got, uh, was baptized by John to, to show the world that he was doing right, it wasn't to save him. It, that shows you right that a water baptism doesn't save you because Jesus didn't have any sins. But yet he was baptized in water, right? So why was he baptized? And what is water baptism all about? He was testifying to Israel that I'm righteous. And that's the reason why he went. John was there baptizing people. They repent of their sins and he baptized them for their repentance. To show to the world that these people had made things right with God. So Jesus had no sin. But yet he went down to John. He says, suffer it to be so now to fulfill all righteousness. We have to show these people that I am right also. Right? And so he was baptized. And then the Bible said when he came out from the, from the water, all of a sudden the heavens were opened. The heavens were opened. And the Bible said the Holy Spirit descended in the bodily form as a dove and rest upon him. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God is all about fullness. God doesn't want to give us just a little bit. He said he was full of grace. He was full of truth. And that's the reason why they crucify him. Because he wasn't one of them flowery preachers that want to tell them that, hey, everything is all right. God loves you and that's all you need to know. No, he looked at Herod and said, go tell that fox. Go tell that crooked politician that he is a wicked person. And the things that he is doing is not right in the sight of God he looked at those Pharisees and said you're like whited sepulcher you appear righteous on the outside but on the inside you're full of dead man bones he said you're like a tomb people walk right over you and then 
and, and they don't even realize that your bones are in there. He preached the fullness of the gospel. I'm talking about the fullness of God tonight. We need it all. Amen. We need it all. We need the grace, but we also need the truth. Because he said, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. And so he said there in our text, he said, and, he, and the word was made flesh, speaking about Jesus, and dwelt among us. And we beheld, we saw the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. Full of grace. Grace is a favor of God. God wants our life to be full of grace and truth. Amen? And truth. Jesus came to fill us to the overflowing with God. He possessed fullness. Even the Bible speak of him. He said in him, or in the scripture I read to you, he said in, in Christ dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He, he, he possessed the fullness of divinity. And so when he saves us, he made us a vessel prepared for the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. When he saved us, he made us a vessel. Y'all with me tonight? You're not drifting away, right? Hold on now, your dinner is home. You'll get to it. He already ate. Okay. Dessert is waiting for you when you get home. I'll be done in just a little bit. But when he saved us, he made us a vessel prepared for the fullness of God. And that's the reason why he told the disciples, he, he told us in so many words, he said, when you get saved, he said, I and my father will come and dwell in you. Amen. He said, I and my father, not just him. He said, I and my father will come and dwell in you. There's, there's three in the Godhead. And then he said, now that you are saved and now that you have the spirit of the Father dwelling in you and you have the spirit of the Son dwelling in you, he said, now you need one more yes. to complete the cycle. Amen. Yes. You need one more to complete, to become that complete man. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes. You need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. You see, the, there's, there's three things that, 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 that our, our Christianity is consist of, and that is one, justification, being saved from sin, become just in the sight of God. That's Jesus' work. He is the one that justifies. The Bible says he's the justifier of all men. And then there's a second part called sanctification. That after you become just or righteous in the Lord, you have to work on yourself to become perfect in the Lord. Who's, the, who's responsible for that mission? The Holy Ghost. Amen. He's the one that sanctifies us. He's the one that worked things out of our life and worked things in our life. Amen. And so we need the Holy Ghost to sanctify us. And when we are justified and sanctified, one of these days, we're going to be glorified. Amen. The Bible said that he will be clothed upon. If the rapture take place, he said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. He said, but we shall be changed. Just like that in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, he said, the first trumpet will sound and and those who are dead and in their tomb, they'll be, they'll be resurrected to life. And he said, we that remain and alive shall be caught up and so shall we be with the Lord. He said, this mortal shall put on immortality. This corruption shall put on in incorruption. Who's the one that's responsible for that? God the Father. Amen. He's the one that's going to give us that glorified body that will be able to endure for all of eternity. Amen. Just like Jesus rose from the dead with a glorified body, we will have a glorified body also and the bible said when we see him we will we will be just like him amen we'll be just like jesus having if you ever read the book of revelation our eyes what color are our eyes going to be i don't know it's going to be amber it's going to be glowing just like jesus amen yeah. what color the skin's going to be it's going to be like brass burn in the furnace i'm already there amen i'm closer <laughs> and closer there amen <laughs> he said we'll be just like jesus right We'll be just like Jesus. He said, we, we'll see him as he is, just as he is. <laughs> we'll change just like him. <clears throat> so God wants to give us the fullness. And then, this, like I said, this is the work of the Holy Ghost. We'll skip all that. Now we'll talk about the fullness of God. <laughs> the fullness of God. I'm talking about the fullness of God. This is your time in the house of the Lord. God doesn't want us to leave with just a little bit. Well, I know a little bit about Jesus. I know a little bit of scripture here and there. I know a little bit of this. I've tasted a little. No, no, no. Come on now. Let's get the fullness of God. Amen. It's available to you. Don't rob yourself of the goodness of the Lord tonight. God said in our Bible reading, he said, uh, he said, I'll read a little bit more to you. He said, that ye may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, all. He wants us to comprehend it all. He wants us to know how deep, 
how wide, how tall, all these things are. Amen. And he said, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with, uh, filled with all the goodness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Thank God tonight, God is able to fill our life to the overflow. Amen. He said if we can understand the depth, the height, the length of it all, God can do it for us. If God can bless us, God doesn't want us to have just a little bit of Christianity, just a little bit of religion here and there. No. He said it's for us to be filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. And you can come to, you can come to this man. I wrap it up with this. The fullness of God. God's desire is to fill us to the overflowing. God wants us to receive tonight the fullness of forgiveness. Not just a little bit of forgiveness. The fullness. When a person comes to Jesus and asks him to forgive them, he just don't <laughs> forgive the bad things and leave the good. He forgives it all. Amen. He cleaned the whole, he cleaned the, the slate, if you will. He wiped out the whole record of sin. He said, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression. He does a complete job. Complete restoration. God restores us completely to him. David said in the psalm, Psalm 23, he restored my soul. And we all know what restoration is. You can take an old piece of furniture and you can restore it and make it brand new, completely brand new in a sense. Amen? Restoration. He wants us to have the fullness of life. Isn't that what he said? He said, a thief coming out both for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you may have life. And that more what? Abundantly. That's fullness to me. Not just a little bit of life. Is there going to be battles? There are going to be battles and struggles, but I don't have to focus on the battles and struggles. I can focus on the life giver. Amen? As has been shared many times, don't focus on the problem and focus on the solution. Right? Focus on the solution. Focus on the God that can help us through all this thing. The God that can turn, can, 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 can turn things around. He wants us to have the fullness of truth. Not just a little bit. The fullness of light. Our life can be filled with the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. No room for darkness. Jesus said, Jesus said in the gospel as he was teaching, he said, if the light that is in you be darkness. He said, how great is that darkness? If the light that God placed in you, if you've allowed some darkness to enter in there, he said, how great is that darkness? Right? God doesn't want any darkness in there. He can dispel the darkness. God is light. The fullness of grace, the fullness of mercy, the fullness of power, the fullness of righteousness. This is all a sermon in itself, each one of them. But don't worry, I'm done. <laughs> the fullness of righteousness. The fullness of glory. And the fullness of riches. The fullness of riches. I was thinking about this and the Bible made the statement that God, all the gold in the world is the Lord's and that he owned the cattle on a thousand hills. And that's just a figure of speech in a sense. But if you think about it, a thousand hills, if even if you have one, that's a thousand, that's a thousand. Right? If you have 10 on each hill, what is that? I don't know. 10,000? <laughs> what if you have 100 on each hill? What if you have 1,000 on each hill? You know, what if you have a, a, a 100,000 on each hill? He's rich. He's rich. God is rich. Amen? God is rich. So God is not against the rich because he's rich. <laughs> God is not against those who have blessings in their life because he gives the blessings. Amen? And so tonight, we're talking about the fullness. All these things, all these things tonight to God wants in our life, that our life will be filled with the fullness of God. With the fullness of God. And so tonight, as she plays and sing, I don't know what she's going to sing tonight, but let's, let's understand tonight, this message tonight, that God wants your life to be filled. Don't run an empty. Fill up your tank tonight. Amen? Don't run an empty. Fill up your tank. Fill up your, your spiritual tank. Fill it up with all the goodness of the Lord. You're in the right place at the right time. The altar is open. Just come, pray, seek God. God, just, just raise up your hand, whatever. Say, God, just pour it out in my life, Jesus. God, you know what I need. She's going to play and sing. Let's all spend some time in prayer tonight. Jesus, tonight I preach your word about the fullness of God. Tonight I pray that whosoever will open up their heart to you and open up their life to you tonight, oh God, I pray by your spirit, oh God, that you will fill them to the overflowing 
with the things that they are desiring of you, of you, Lord God. Bless tonight. Accomplish your will, we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. If you want to pray for anything, a touch in your body, a healing, uh, give your life, whatever it is, you slip your hand up, I'll come and pray. I don't like to force anybody to pray, but if you willingly ask for prayer tonight, I will come and pray with you, and God will hear and answer. Amen? She's going to sing. Let's, let's find a place to pray tonight. Thank you. Jesus. Time we get ready to close out the service or we preach the word of God by the fullness of God. But but let's let's have a wonderful week in the Lord. Let's have a blessed week, a week that is celebrating the fullness of the Lord. Amen. That God, you can have uh, you can have the joy and the peace and all the things that God wants. And she's gonna sing us one more song. We're done, but she's gonna lead us in this one song. And um, huh? if she can find it, and we'll close out the service with that tonight, so we can start our day. With a full tank of Holy Ghost fuel. And tonight we've refueled. So tomorrow you can have a fresh start. And then when you get tomorrow evening, just pray, God, fill me up again. Amen.
Let's stay filled up in the Lord. So let's, let's just slip our hands and worship the Lord. She's going to give us one more song. We'll close with that and we'll have a good night in the Lord. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for this time to be in your house. We thank you, Lord God, we can come and worship you. We can praise you. We can give you glory and honor, God. God, we want to magnify you and bless you tonight and give thanks to you. For you are such a wonderful God. You've given us the fullness of all things. And tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray by your spirit, O oh God, that you will, you will touch, touch our lives, O oh God. Heal, heal the souls of men and women, O oh God. We love you, Jesus. Your presence is here tonight. We just want to soak into you, soak in your presence one more time before we leave, oh God. We bless you, God, and thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ask all these things tonight. In Jesus' name, we give you the praise and honor. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Praise the Lord.